What's going on, YouTube? You're back with Shades, and we're continuing our Let's Play of Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, we were having a conversation with Hideki, and we were actually teaching him how to sign a little bit, which was pretty cool. But then it derailed into a conversation about how Yamaku is like, and how the Academy is like, and then this guy burst through the door with the energy of an ox. Oh, God. I can already tell I'm not going to like this guy. Like, if he's actually like this all the time, I'm not exactly sure how I would feel about it. Like, like I liked, um, uh, Lily's, no, 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 no. I never met Lily's parents, and, um, what's her name? Emmy's mom was pretty okay. Like, like, she doesn't seem like a typical mom, but this guy seems like the over-the-top character. I mean, look at those, I don't think his proportions are right, either. Like, whatever, I, I don't know. Like, I just hope we don't have to deal with him a lot, but then again, he is the father of Hisao's the significant other in this route, so... Uh, hang on. Uh, just turn on the AC. It's a little warm in here. So anyway, let's just get back to it, shall we? The back door flies open and Jigoro strides out of it, keeping his back straight and talking, taking giant slow regal strides, like either a king or a huge jackass. I try to turn away, using the train of logic that if I can't see him, he can't see me. Unfortunately, it doesn't pan out and he comes over so fast, it's like he appeared out of the air over my shoulders. Oh ho, what's up here? What are you two doing? Flailing your hands around, playing cat's prayer like a bunch of girls. I'm teaching Hideki some sign language. What about you, Mr. Hakamichi? He narrows his eyes suspiciously as if he's not used to be people being polite to him. I'm writing an autobiography of my life and times, and by writing I mean I am dictating it to my biographer. Unfortunately, she is running late. I'm professional. Perhaps you should read it when it's published later this year. I could put you on the right waiting list. Maybe it'll give you the moral compass you seem to lack in your life, and inspire you to stop sucking. What the fuck is with this guy? I want to punch him in the neck. It can't be sustainable for him to be so casually insulting to everyone, though Hideki is likely too detached to even notice. She's nay as deaf and most of the insults must fly over Misha's head, but surely Akira must have an opinion on this. I try not to think about it, if he's doing this to psych me out, then I have to stay calm or he wins. He must absolutely definitely not win, this must be how she's nay feels. How old are you? 46. It doesn't seem old enough to justify writing a biography, I mean it's not even old. Though most people start writing their memoirs a lot later than that. Shut up, boy. I'm gonna give you advice. Do not talk about matters of age with people older than you. You are less than half my age, and you have no right to talk about old. I have an ulcer older than you. You should get that checked out. He might have a point, though. He definitely is older than I am. Either way, if we were the same age, I wouldn't have to explain myself to you. Sweater vest. What the fuck? I'm getting legitimately angry. I want to punch this guy in the mouth. Just the mouth, though. Ugh. Yeah. Why do you make that noise? Are you mad? Well, obviously. Good. Your sweater is terrible. I want you to feel bad about it. The burn tells me it's working. I like my sweater. I'm sure you like huffing glue, too. That doesn't make it right. I don't huff glue. Where do you get the impression that I do? That is slander. I wonder how Hideki knows what slander is. Maybe Jigoro is a lawyer. I can sort of see that, although I only thought... I thought only TV Laura's were this antagonistic. I don't know if I should take that chance or ask if he has that's his job. That's right. He's right. It is slander. Are you a lawyer? I was guessing. I guess based on the fact that you are stupid. It's like how you how it's like how you are assuming I'm a lawyer, except you have no reason to think that. If you want to know what what I do so badly, why don't you pre-order my autobiography? I insulted my book and by extension my entire life. What gives you the right to do that? Arrogant. I'm trying to think of how I could make you understand my struggle, maybe by beating you with my autobiography. <laughs> Hope you walk away from the beating having learned a valuable lesson, like not making assumptions. Assault. But he made an assumption too, that I have glue. I consider calling him out on this glaring example of hypocrisy, but I don't think it's worth it. He would probably explain this away by saying, shut up, boy. It sounds a bit racist when you add the word, boy. <laughs> Back in my day, children were seen and not heard, and to be an adult meant having experienced many hardships. With even a glance, people could instantly judge a man's character. Childhood existed only to temper you for adulthood. Up, oh, up, oh, he's one of those. Stuck in his ways. When you look at me, can you not see the catalog of my experiences even at a glance? Oh, maybe. Were you a sword fighter? He calls me a Hawaiian, and a werewolf. Wait, didn't you tell me that before not to make assumptions? And now you just ask me to assume stuff. And you're saying everyone... you. And, you, and you're saying everyone you, when you were my age did it, and that had to be like in the 80s. That wasn't even that long ago. 
I'm ready to give him a piece of my mind for talking like he had to walk 15 miles in the snow to ride a coal train and that he had to shovel coal into it himself before climbing up a mountain while fighting ogres to get to school. <laughs> was that a reference? I hope that was a reference. But now that I finally want to fight, Jigoro's happy to have a good thing going, just continuing to ramble about how difficult it was growing up one generation ago, twirling his sword like a baton and stopping occasionally to yawn or check the time. The tardiness of his autobiographer is the foremost in his mind. That means the whole time he's been insulting me, he must have been doing it just to pass the time. To add insult to injury, his watch is also really nice. When I was your age, kids had responsibilities. Not like today. Sickening. No one thinks about the consequences of their actions anymore. They just do whatever they want, thinking no one will hold them accountable since they are young. It's odd. The description could fit Shizune and Misha. I thought similar thing. I thought th oh, I thought something similar only yesterday, but it only fits them slightly. Look at yourself, an amoral, directionless, delinquent glue huffer with a complete lack of etiquette and absolutely no fashion sense. Alright, tomorrow's Japan. Disgraceful. It's the future of this once great country. What the hell? What, what the fuck? Hey guys, I'm back. So, um, I just realized I lost 30 minutes of footage. And, uh, I'm kind of pissed about that. But I'm not going to go back and re-record it only because I've been through it already. So I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Um, oh, I'm so pissed. Fuck, I'm just going to keep going. I'll, I'll figure out something to do. Oh my God, I'm so fucking mad. I know someone you get, you get along well with. Don't, inter don't, uh, bleh, don't interrupt. Who? One of your friends? Why well, I want to talk to someone, some awful teenager? Have you been listening? Why are you so rude, boy? Your attitude is not one that will make you a lot of friends. I wish you would stop giving me so, so much advice. Or at least I wish you would give me advice that would have the decency to adhere to himself. Where have you been? Huh? Not you, idiot. Oops, didn't notice you there. Shizune smiles and gives a short wave. Her arrival made Jigoro stop talking, so I'm already happy to see her for that reason alone. Mishi and I decided to go into town yesterday. Hisa, I noticed that you were looking at some clothes yesterday at a store window. I thought you would go back to buy some of them for you. It was supposed to be a surprise, though. She looks annoyed that the surprise is ruined, even though she ruined it herself. Here you go. Thanks. Misha wanted to cut her hair. I told her not to, but she said it was too hot for the summer. Yeah, I don't know. That, what, that makes a lot of sense to me. But it must be like an oven under there. I want to see it. Where's Misha anyway? Over here. Hi, Hee-chan. Hi, Mr. Shichan's father. Hi, Hideki. Holy hell! I'm glad I fixed the recording at this point. Because my god. My god. Her hair is it's just gone. My god. Uh, I'm so fucking mad though. Because like. I might have to just re-record the footage and read over it. And hopefully it works. Like, I'll just listen to my own recording and, like, clip through. It's not that hard. Uh, whatever. Fuck it. Misha runs around us once in a wide circle before stopping next to Shizune. For the first time, she hasn't put her hands over my eyes. Although, now I see she has bags of her own to carry. So it's not like she could have even if she wanted to. Although I'm positive she tried before. Her meticulously styled curls are gone now, in favor of a much shorter, sportier look. Misha looks even happier than usual, probably because she, has, she knows she won't have to wake up at the crack of dawn every morning just to do her hair. What's with that? What is what is that haircut? You look like an intern. Your old haircut merely made you look like you were wearing a pink judge wig. Judge to intern is a huge demotion. He so is he saying something insulting? Tell him not to insult my friends. Don't insult my friends. Which one of you is talking? Both of us. I agree with her. <laughs> what do you think, Hee-chan? You should have kept it like it was. Aw, Hee-chan, you look disappointed. You don't like it either? Well, yeah. The kind of man I like your old hair your old haircut more, but I think this one is nice too. It suits you. Aw, thanks, Hee-chan. Touching. If you like it so much, maybe you should you two should trade. You can't trade a haircut. What a shame. Even her older haircut would suit you much more than the current slacker haircut. Awful. As for you. Hmm, actually this is much less garish than your other haircut. I like it. Huh, really? Thanks, Mr. Shizune's dad. It's Mr. Hakamichi. Talk like a normal person. Hmm, I don't understand. Okay, okay, okay. I'll call you Mr. Hakamichi. Ah, it's like speaking to a slide whistle. Contemptible. Where's my biographer? Hideki! He st starts quietly muttering to himself and walks off. I guess a wannabe cranky old man like Jigoro would like, at the very least be hesitant to yell at girls. 
Suddenly he doubles back, unable to resist his urge to have the last word. And another thing, you do not have to be so loud. I don't like being shouted at. What? Shouting? I'm not shouting. I can't think of anyone more unqualified to talk about what garish or to chastise someone else on shouting at people. It's like our parade of hypocrisies and the hits just keep coming. An unusual reaction seems to be taking place. Misha apparently finds G Girl funny and laughs pretty much at every time he says something, which only makes him makes him berate her harder. I guess this is what they call a vicious circle. Misha's voice is punctuated with explosions of laughter and seems to come from everywhere. On the other hand, G Girl is booming and directed like a cannon. In any case, they are both unbelievably loud. The more they talk to each other, the more they seem to play up each other's volume and get louder. Ow, my ears hurt. Why are you shouting? Misha hands wrap from my eyes from behind, something I'm so used to Misha doing that for the first time I find myself confused by it, since Misha is in front of me. She lets, a hold, she lets go and holds a finger up to her lips. What a perfect distraction. Now it's our opportunity. Let's sneak off. Uh-oh. Why do we have to sneak off? Why not just walk off? It wouldn't be as fun. It's decided. It's a secret mission. Escape without being detected. Extract Hideki from, from bonus points. Already she has simplified the situation into a game. She's night quietly slides away from the scene and begins edging toward the house. I walk towards it normally. I can't find Shizune at first, but eventually she walks into the main part of the house, sipping a glass of ice water and dangling her glasses back and forth with her free hand. She whips them on as soon as she sees me. You didn't rescue Hideki. That means you would not get bonus points. If you were being graded on style, I had to I had to deduct points for being. I had had to deduct points for a boring escape. It looked like you wanted to talk to me. I didn't know you had to be stylish about it. You know, you some say that the most stylish people are the ones that don't try too hard to look cool. You're really cool. <laughs> I, uh, you can understand some of the most you know, the ones that don't try to look cool. You're really cool. I wonder how it is that I can pick up on her sarcasm so easily, and how hard it might be, to, um, might have been for her to learn the concept of sarcasm without being able to hear. I can imagine it. You seem like you're in a good mood. Although I guess it isn't really a good mood, the more she, that she seems very excited. I'm in a bad mood. She's setting her drink down, she sits down on the couch. I liked her regular hairstyle much more. It looked so pretty. It was refined and meticulous. Now she looks so sporty and tomboyish. I wouldn't call Misha refined and meticulous. It sounds more like you. You should give it a chance. Grow your hair out and make it look like drills. <laughs> hmm, actually maybe this suits you just fine. She's in rubs the frame of her glasses roughly, looking annoyed at the implications behind what I just signed to her. That's fine, because I wasn't totally implying that. She was a little closer to me and take when I take a seat. I'm a tomboy. Well, no one would call you a tomboy, based on appearances. Shizune glares at me, unamused. I have to fight to keep a straight face. Maybe you should. Do, maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you two should trade haircuts anyway. You sound like my father. It's true. Shizune giggles noiselessly when she sees my displeasure at the realization. Jumping at her feet, she twirls an invisible sword in her left hand while standing up militarily, straight and grimacing. A terrifyingly accurate impression. Anyway, I don't take advice from anyone who wears a blue sweater with brown pants. Where's the sense of color coordination? Dreadful. But changing my haircut, that might be fun, wouldn't it be? I want to see how everyone would react. You must be, like really, you must really like playing with people. Sometimes I, I think a little too much. No answer. The way she fiddles with her glasses and brow furrowed tells me that it's because she can't. It's fun. Then, with more confidence while pulling herself closer to me. It's, for, it's fun to drag more and more people into my life. Oh, I see. I wonder if I'm included in that number. I want to ask, but I'm not. But I'm not even sure how I would. Shizune wags a finger preemptively, indicating that she won't be answering such a question anyway. She reaches for a glass, but doesn't seem to realize how far she's managed to inch away from it at all, all this time. She, to prevent herself from tipping over clumsily, Shizune tries to grab onto me and ends up pulling me on top of her. Whoa. Whoa. It's time. <sighs> Brace myself and yourself. As I lean over her, I can feel the heat coming off her body and realize how close we are. I can hear her soft breathing and the slight rustling of her clothes as she momentarily fidgets about. I, I don't want it now. I don't want it ever. I just want, I just want to get on with the story. <laughs> A blush starts to creep into her cheeks, but her eyes stare straight into mine, dark and unblinking. It's the same look from the first time I saw her, piercing and devoid of any clear emotion, just waiting to see what'll happen next, like the eyes of a cat. It makes me feel uncomfortable being looked at in such a way. 
This is the first time I've been so close to her for an extended period of time, and the mood is different now. The situation isn't the same as passing the touching of hands or, or her and Misha, Misha's usual games. She's a blah. Shizune's fingers weave together tentatively, but she makes no move to sign. The look in her eyes isn't just nothing, like I thought. It's more like expectation. I wonder if maybe I've been following the string of her expectations this entire time. I feel her grabbing me by the shoulders, then gently but firmly pushing me off of her. I roll sideways onto the soft couch and pull myself into a sitting position less than a foot from her. The way I feel, she might have been, she might have, she might as well have thrown me ten yards. When I think about it, this is perhaps one of the biggest drawbacks to sign language. She's said that the fact that you have to sign your words out with your hands means you have time to reflect on what you say before you say it. But on the other hand, it also means that what would normally be an awkward silence becomes an insurmountable wall. I just blurt out something, anything to try to dispel the tension I'm feeling right now if I could, but I can't. Ordinarily, I think that it, that what would be normal would be to apologize, then maybe leave. But right now, I wonder if that's even applicable. I can't get past how guilty such an action would seem, like I were just slinking away. Of course, it's not like I can just play it off like nothing happened either. That would be insulting for both of us. So, as much as I don't want to, I apologize quickly, so quickly I forget to sign it, then I go back to my room. Aww. No sex? <laughs> Shame. I'm actually a little disappointed. I, was, I thought it was going to happen now, but uh, I guess not. Sighing, so I let myself fall backwards into bed. I wish I could go to sleep right now, but I feel wide awake. Oh, hi. I sit up and I hear the door closing and open my eyes to see Shizune sitting on the chair in front of me. She asks a question that goes right over my head. Due to my surprise, it's not a feeling I'm good at concealing. And I don't think she it's what she intended. Whatever she was saying, she backs off and doesn't attempt to sign again for a while. This is the first time I've been in your room. Shizune tends her fingers and puts on an exaggerated attempt to make herself look embarrassed and modest at the thought. I can't appreciate the joke, just the fact that she's here makes me feeling a bit scattered. Very funny, this isn't even my room, it's your guest room. Besides, you and Misha barge into my room once before. It seems as if she expected me to say more. I remember feeling very panicked when they burst into my room, afraid of what conclusions they would jump to seeing the wall of pills and lining the place. I don't think that Shizune remembers though. It made you nervous. The way she says it so factually stings me. A lot of things make me nervous. You're one of them. Because you're over eager to get people involved in whatever you're doing. Whether it's joining the student council or even taking a break, whether they want to or not. Oh, oh, she's getting mad. She signs almost at a crawl, her hands pausing mid-sentence far too much, causing the word to dissipate formlessly before I, I can even begin to try to understand them. I try to let the let on that I try not to let on that this this is the case. It seems to work, but she looks a little sad, and I regret that I have nothing to say to snap her from her strangely wistful and distant expression she's wearing. All I can do is wait for her to come out of it. You are right. I want to drag everyone into my life, but lately I'm no longer sure if it's the right thing to do. I enjoyed you taking me to your favorite restaurant the other night. It's not like that was my favorite restaurant. I have others I like. I might even be able to rank them by number. Really? This chair is so hard, I want to sit on the bed. Motioning her to her to go ahead, I wait for her to get off the chair and take her place when she does. Although I didn't intend it to, although I didn't intend it for it to be, she finds it amusing. Close your eyes. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. I sense I sense it. It's it's coming. In more ways than one. It's coming. Why? It's a surprise. I decide to humor her and close them. I can feel her leaning over me, and suddenly, something soft and moist touches my lips. My body tenses up in surprise, fortunately not as awkward as the reaction I could have been. It was just a quick peek, and I almost think that it's the end of it, but then she kisses me again, more deeply this time. Her hands slide onto my shoulders, up to my neck, and then back down again, then across my shoulders and down my arms. I can feel the weight of her body on my legs, and the eroticism of the situation isn't lost on me. At this point, I'm ready to try and open my eyes just a crack, but as if expecting it, she puts her fingers on my eyelids. Uh, 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 I read it first. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I'm about to breathe. 
Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Seconds later, something ties my hands together at the wrists, and I panic. Not knowing what to make of this, my first thought is to ask Shizune what she's thinking. Even though she can't hear me, I'm sure she gets the gist of it. She won't let go of my hands, twisting my fingers over them, from the lines of my palms, over my knuckles, and to my wrists. Ah! <laughs> it's happening! Why are you surprised? I'm not! <laughs> I'm just scared! I'm sorry for what I have to read in the next couple minutes. It's okay, I'm letting you know. Put the other headphone in, please. Thank you! Okay, guys, I think we're about to enter a sex scene. I'm gonna read as much as I can, but Why I'm gonna. you start reading louder? Sorry. <laughs> Literally, like, alright, cover your ears. Alright, louder! <laughs> I'm sorry. Alright, uh, guys, I'm really sorry, but, um,. I feel ten times more awkward about reading this because Edgar's right over there. Um, and uh, Kimmy could come back at any minute and watch me reading erotica. So, um, I'm going to read as far as I can. And uh, hopefully, this is just a tease and I can move on with my life. But if it's not, we'll see where we go. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been 20 minutes. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want more videos from me or from this series, hit the subscribe button. And you're not exiting the Shadyverse. My name's Shades, and the next part will be either um, age-gated or unlisted. And there will be a link in the description if it's a um, sex scene. If it's not a sex scene, then uh, we'll just keep going. But other than that, see you guys later. Uh, I have to brace myself.